what's up? Uh, Faizan here from Research Beast. Um, on this channel, I share different tips and tricks for researchers, different motivational talks, and I also talk to experts about the research methods or anything related to research. So if you're interested in content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we'll be talking about an important question that many people, uh, many PhD students or even master students who are working on their thesis or even people with their PhD have this question. And the question is, what do I do if my hypotheses are not supported? So this question actually is very important because uh, many people struggle with this because remember you normally get to come to your um, hypothesis development, sorry, hypothesis testing way deep in your research, whether you are doing your PhD or writing a research paper, this is way past the time where you can turn back and change things, right? And that is why uh, many people struggle with this particular question on what should I do if my hypothesis are not supported. And then also, unfortunately, in many countries, if a student's hypothesis are not supported, those students are looked as culprit, which is actually a very dangerous thing because we see many cases where students actually harm themselves because of the pressure of these type of things. So um, it's important for us to, you know, look into this issue and try to answer this question into the best possible way. In this video, uh, first I'll talk about this question or what do I think about it, but then in the later part of the video, I'll have a very good friend of mine, Dr. Katrina Berezina, uh, who will answer the same question. So you'll have another opinion on this question. Now, before I get into this question, I need to um, explain some stuff on how is it important to talk about hypotheses, whether they're supported or not. So remember that when you uh, propose your hypothesis, that is way before you collect your data. So you have not collected your data. You have studied the literature, obviously, so you understand the content and the theoretical part, but you don't really know about your data yet. However, you do have some idea about the context of the study and what your potential respondents might be doing, right? So once this is done, now you collected data, you analyze data, and after analysis, you realize whether your hypothesis are supported or not supported, whatever. Now, what happens is that after you analyze your data, it's, high, it's really, I mean, common that your understanding of either the subject content or your context would change, especially if your hypotheses are not supported. Now, if your hypotheses are supported, yes, you make some contribution, but you already know those things, right? So it's just that like, um, if variable A impacts variable B, you already know it, you now test it in your study, you confirm it. However, if your hypotheses are not supported, then what happens is either your understanding of the research context or if your understanding of your research population would change because you have a hypothesis that was not supported. I'll give you an example. So recently I did a study with a colleague of mine, Dr. Sidan um, and Dr. Jihan about um, uh, service robots and Generation Z. Uh, and why they use service robots. So our understanding was that because Generation Z is so tech technology savvy and they are so much using technology everywhere, they should be very used to technology and they would be using technology more towards improving the performance uh, rather than the emotional connection. However, our findings were opposite and that was really a little bit shock for us because here we are with already data collected and everything and then now our findings are not what we expected the findings to be. What happened is that uh, I talked to some people who do work in this area and then after a lot, lot of discussion we got to understand that because so this is not my interpretation but based on my discussion with many people that because Generation Z is Yes, they are tech savvy, but they're also very lonely generation because they're mainly active on social media and not really active outside with the outside world. So for them, service robots may be good to improve their efficiency, but it's also one way for them to be emotionally connected to something. And that's why our findings were different. So uh, that's what we explained in our discussion part, even though hypotheses were not supported. So this is um, very important for us to understand that when hypotheses are not supported, that changes our understanding of either the theory 
or either the context of the city. So very important to know. So to conclude this, it's important that if your findings are supported or not, if your hypothesis are supported or not, in your discussion part, you do need to mention that. Whether they are supported, whether they are not supported. But then you don't stop here. You need to provide a reason. It is very important, especially if your hypothesis are not supported, to definitely provide a reason on why you think these hypotheses are not supported whether it's because the the context of the study is different whether it's because the respondents are different whether because the questionnaire that was used was not fully adapted or whatever whatever the reason is that is important for you to mention that right. you know we do all this stuff in your discussion part or in your implication part right where you need to talk about what is your uh, study bringing onto the table so remember one thing that theoretical implication means something new found about the theory now this something new found about the theory can be mainly if your hypothesis are not supported in my opinion because if your hypothesis are supported you are simply confirming something that everybody know but if your hypothesis are not supported you can bring something new to the table but again it's conditional upon how do you explain why your hypothesis are not being supported so very very important and then when you are doing this it's important to refer back to the past studies, not only based on what you think, because in research, you always need to refer back to the things, right? So when you are writing about this, if your hypotheses are not supported, look at how different are your hypotheses, how different are your results? Are they completely 180 degree opposite or are they partially different from previous research? That is why it's important for you to go back to research. And also important for reviewers who are reviewing your paper, readers, to understand the significance of your study or where does your study stand in there. So um, that is my take on uh, this question. Again, like I said, if your hypotheses are not supported, be honest, report them, but then provide a justification on why do you think these hypotheses are not significant. Now, um, let me move to um, Dr. Katrina, ask her the same question. But before we go there, I'll say that this, these are my views on this question, and you will soon listen to Dr. Katrina's view. It's very okay if you do not agree to what I'm saying. Uh, and if you don't, I would highly recommend you to please put down a comment and tell me what do you think about this issue so we can get some discussion going on thank you very much and i hope you learned something from this video hey guys if you think if you think you are getting some value out of this video please do not forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel uh, i would also appreciate if you can share this video within your um, within your uh, social networks or within your networks of people that may need this video. Today we have Dr. Katrina Berezina with us. Uh, Dr. Katrina, thank you, thank you, Katrina, for accepting the invitation for being with uh, me today on this channel. Um, so, Dr. Katrina Berezina is uh, an assistant professor right now um, uh, in the Department of Nutrition and Hospitality Management at the University of Mississippi. Um, uh, Dr. Katrina received her PhD in Health and Human Performance with concentration in tourism at the University of Florida. Uh, I know her since 2015, actually, because uh, uh, we uh, attended a conference together on a cruise ship. And uh, then, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to work with her for a couple of years at the University of South Florida. Uh, before uh, she left us and joined the University of Mississippi. So um, that's a very brief introduction for Dr. Katrina. The reason why I invited uh, you, Katrina, today is uh, for two reasons. One is obviously because of your experience as a researcher, as an editor and a reviewer. Uh, you're involved with GHTT for such a long time and you, know, you are an integral part of it. But then the other thing uh, why I invited you uh, today was because um, I've seen you working with many graduate students over the years, right? You have served on committees for uh, graduate students. You have also served on, as committee chair for many graduate students. And now at the University of Mississippi, uh, you are also um, serving on uh, doctorate, doctoral students committees and you are, you are supervising and advising them. Uh, many, many people on my YouTube channel are uh, graduate students and they are interested in listening uh, to people like you and um, they are interested to get answers from you know people who are experienced in advising and supervising students so um, I know that most of the graduate students as far as I know right the master students who have worked with you most of them 
were successfully published after their master's thesis. So they published their uh, master's thesis as a research paper in very well reputed journal. So um, this is the background for why I invited you today, and you were very, uh, you know, gracious to accept my invitation. Um, we have thank you so on... much, Prison. I'm of very course. excited to be here, and thank you for your invitation. It's my pleasure. Okay. Uh, thank you, Katrina. Um, so one question that um, I saw, which was very interesting, actually caught my attention, and yes. therefore this one: if all my hypotheses are not supported, right? So let's say five, six hypotheses mm -hmm. are supported. What do I do? Okay. Yes, that's a very interesting question. So, um, in the very specific situation, I would say um, I would be curious to see how that happened. So, usually, uh, I would expect that. If your research was built on some theoretical base, some previous literature, then it's very unusual for me to hear that none of the hypotheses were supported. So I'm, I, it's difficult for me to comment on why all of them didn't work. But at the same time, I think that when your research hypothesis is not supported, it's not something wrong. So that's a new discovery. So if we follow the logic of how research is usually developed, we try to conceptualize the certain phenomenon that we are interested in, right? We try to uh, find a foundation for building our research in previous studies. So basically, every time we need to do a very thorough job of reviewing all of the papers that were or all relevant papers of course that existed before we started our research so then if all of a sudden you find that the relationship doesn't work that's great that's great so i know that some uh well, probably students, PhD students, when they start their research, they're worried that, oh, I proposed this hypothesis and then it doesn't work. Well, that means that you discovered something different. So if we would not discover something different or if we wouldn't follow that line of research, we may still believe that the world is flat, right? So, but when you create something or you find something which is contradictory to uh, previous findings, that's an opportunity for you to examine why this is so. And, you know, what I would think about this situation is that having a hypothesis that is not supported is not negative or it's not bad for your thesis or dissertation or a research paper that you're writing, but it's an opportunity for you to think why this has happened, why all previous literature was showing different results, and why your paper is showing different results, right? right? So that may come from different areas. So maybe something that we talked about a specific country. So maybe there is something different to that country. Maybe there is something different about the sample that you collected, right? So we all work with different samples. So sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's not, right? So you just need to look critically at your re results and, you know, be your worst critic and try to see what I have done right, what I have done wrong, what may explain these differences. So maybe there is something in design of your study that has led to this different result in hypothesis testing. Or maybe there is something interesting. Maybe you're onto something and you need to build another study and research that. So I don't think that uh, having an unexpected result or not supported hypothesis in your study is a negative thing, but you need to carefully look at that, why that happened. Evaluate your reasoning, evaluate your theoretical framework, evaluate the context of your study, plus all the methods, such as your sampling, your statistical analysis, your data cleaning approach, and all of that. Right. So um, again, I just want to reiterate what you said. It happens to a lot of people, like. Not, I mean, the question is if all my hypotheses are not supported, right? Uh, and you answered it perfectly. So I even say, like, even if one or two of your hypotheses are not supported, even then you have to think about why is it not supported yeah. or why is it not because I propose, right? And most of the times, because all these numbers that we use to support our hypothesis come from your data, this is not magic, right? And mm -hmm. data is from your respondents. So 
if it's not supported, it may really mean that your responders do not agree to what you are saying. Or you might have made some mistake in the methodology while you are designing the study or while you are collecting or cleaning the data. Uh, one thing that happens to a lot of people where uh, because of um, not understanding the concept of uh, heterogen heterogeneous groups within your sample, right? So, so for instance, if you are collecting data about uh, food ordering, right, online food ordering apps or something, now, obviously, you have male and female in your sample. And sometimes what happens is that male and female show very di different or the same behavior. And it's highly possible that both of them nullify you know, each other in the sample. So um, it's important that you understand these concepts. And uh, if your hypotheses are not supported, go into some additional analysis to see. Maybe you can find some very interesting insights. Um, uh, one uh, mistake that many people make is if your hypotheses are not supported, you don't include them in your discussion, which I think is not a good approach. So if your hypothesis is not supported, make it part of your discussion. Like what Katrina said, that's an unexpected result that may even be a good contribution, right? Um, so be, be um, innovative, be a little bit courageous with your findings. If it's not supported, it's not that you are the culprit. It's just maybe something very interesting that you are afraid of discussing. So thank you very yes. much, Katrina. Uh, yes. That's all for your job, for your research. And I hope that everybody stays safe and we will go through this COVID-19 together. Thank you for having me, Faisal.